What is going on, my reptile junkies? Guys, as the title said, invertebrate update. I hadn't done one of these videos in a while. It's been well requested. I've just been pushing it back because, you know, if you guys have been following me a while, you know how big of a wuss I am when it comes to the tees. I like to look at them through the glass, but when it comes to having to pull one out, oh my god. Well, I guess let's get right on into it, guys. Guys, I guess we're going to start here. Uh, I went inside to get April, and her and Alyssa had fell asleep, so I said, shoot, I guess I didn't want to wake them, and I really want to get this video done, so uh, if y'all bear with me, I'm used to having a cameraman, so I'm playing with tripods and everything else, but anyway, this is kind of my reference guide. Uh, it's I got just a printout of every, uh, every one of my insects or inverts. And it's just kind of a reference to be able to go back through and, you know, remember where they're from. And cause there's so many, I, I just, I'd hate to get it wrong. And this really helps out. So it's a great idea. But I guess the book right here on the centipede, we'll start with that. All right, guys. Here is the Vietnamese centipede. Now, I had two of these, and if you've been following me a while, you know that I said that I had lost one. It, it appeared like it had went to molt, and it didn't. Uh, it's the one I'd had the longest. It was full grown when I got it. It's a lot bigger than this one. I mean, this one's done gotten a, a lot bigger since I've had it as well, but uh, have had no issues at all with it. These things really get a bad rap. People say that, uh, oh, they'll chew through plastic and... They're so fast, they'll run right up the tongue before you, well, yeah, I mean, they are. They're quick. You know, you really have to watch them, but it's definitely not a monster. It's been a really cool add-in. I've, I've had them in these five-gallon slide lid zillas. No issues, just some leaf litter. Humidity 60 to 75%. I just, I missed one side of the enclosure, let it dry, and then I missed the other side of the enclosure, and it seems to work out great for me, guys, but... There's Mr. Centipede. Such a crazy critter. Alright, off to the next. Alright guys, in here I got my vinegaroon. Um, very cool, very cool insect. Can actually spray uh, pretty gnarly liquid out of its butt back there if you look it has like the equivalent of a I don't know what I'd call that I mean it's like a straw back there hanging off and this one has not sprayed me um, but there again I don't try to handle it or anything it's uh, it's been a really cool really cool critter it just really looks like an alien to me it can be fast when it wants to be um, I keep a small little water dish in there for him. Uh, 75 to 80 degrees in the room here is awesome. And I missed it once a week. And that's it. Alright. Alright guys, in this tub is my Asian 4 Scorpion. Done really, really well. Don't just disturb you, buddy. I have him in just a little Tupperware and a hide. He has grown, though. He's gonna definitely. I'm probably gonna switch him up to a five gallon here before long. But uh, I've been feeding him uh, just crickets and dubia roaches once every week. Missed him twice a week. And when I, I don't keep a water bowl in here actually, I just I drip it uh, directly to his head and he's done awesome. Might end up adding another one of those at some point. Come on now, I ain't got no shoes on. Don't run out on the floor on me. Hmm. Very cool. Over to something else. Right here guys. This is the uh, white spotted assassin bug. Uh, Eerie arachnids, he graciously sent me some. Um, it wasn't his fault. The post lady, she rode around the whole day with my assassin bugs. It was extremely hot. And unfortunately, 
that is the only one that has made it. It has grown great from where they were. It's got a nice little hole right there. It's doing really neat. I can't wait for them to get grown. I'm sure at the next show I'll be looking for some more. I said these guys, these are the African species, tropical Africa. Um, right here in the room at room temperatures, I keep them high on the shelf so it stays around, you know, roughly 80 ish degrees, 78, 80. Uh, seem to be doing really good. I miss them once a week and most of the time he's going to get his moisture from the food, but they say that it's about as bad as a, a really bad bee sting, so I don't want to get popped by him, but they can be really quick and they want to be. It's really cool once again. Of, uh, Mr. Area Rackton is the semi those, though. It's an awesome, awesome little deal. Let's grab another one. I'll do this one. <clears throat> do this one quick, guys. This is my pumpkin patch. Comes from Columbia. Uh, there again, another one thrives 75 to 80 degrees. I missed it uh, twice a week, sometimes three times a week, but I do the same as with the others. I just miss one side and let it dry out and then miss the alternate other side. I do keep a bottle cap water bowl in there for him. Right there. He has grown leaps and bounds. The dwarf species of tarantula. Super, super fast, guys. That's why I said I'm going to do this quick. I was hoping he wouldn't come darting out of that enclosure. It's going to need an upgrade here before long. I actually just cleaned him. Uh, he's doing great. That is my pumpkin patch. Alright, <clears throat> this is my biggest tarantula. This is my T. Sturmy. Um, Therafosa Sturmy. Let's try that. Uh, from Guyana. Uh, it's a tropical spider. Um, if you guys go back, you see I got this from Repticon maybe, I don't know, six months ago or so. The T. Blonde, the T. Blondie is actually the largest. This one falls in just a little bit shy behind it. But the T. Blondie is a little bit more difficult to care for from what I understand. This guy still has no hair on his butt. If y'all go back, I knew I got a really good deal on this spider. It's an older one. Uh, so I know that I probably gonna have a whole lot of time with him, but I've had him for six months. I've been happy so far. Really gives me a good idea of what I'm looking at as far as care goes. But I've been happy even if he is an old timer. It's a really neat spider. He's been feeding on Madagascar roaches. I actually alternate a little bit of heat source to get him up to about 85 degrees. Uh, what I'll do is I'll give him a good mist, raise the temperature, and let it dry out completely, and then I mist it again. And he seems to be doing fine, guys, but I'm not going to mess with him too much. Let's get on to another one. Alright, you can barely see it, but down in that hole is my uh, burgundy skeleton leg. The Bofus Refeshings. I'm sure I murdered that. Uh, this guy here, he requires a little bit more moisture content, so I've got a little bit more vermiculite in the mix in his little enclosure. I, I just cleaned it. He had a awesome little tube web done in the corner as well as he's got a hole dug. I'm trying to see if y'all can see just a little bit of him. It's going to be a gorgeous spider though. It's just another one of those that's kind of a pet hole. You really don't see it that often unless it comes out the feed. But um, there again, another 75 to 80 degree threshold. Awesome. This guy actually missed the whole enclosure twice a week. And I let it dry out and missed it again. So it, it seems to have served me well. This guy was a itty bitty bitty sling when we got him. But really neat spider. Let's check out another one. We should come out. That is the little 
Mexican red rump, uh, Brachypelmia vegans. It's actually one that we had got, I guess, two or three months ago. Petco actually had it, one of those little tubs. I had it somewhere around here. I don't know where I went. Um, it's molted. I actually disturbed him, pulled out a lot of his stuff. I need to, he ain't quite big enough to come out of there yet, but he's going to need something bigger here before long. Cool species, makes a bunch of cool holes. Kind of more or less another pet hole. I'm glad to have caught him out there. I keep this guy dry. Um, I, I missed him once a week and only missed half the enclosure and he's done great. When I go out of town, I put a bottle cap in, but there's the red rump. Get him closed up before he decides to make a go for it. <laughs> no, oh, it just went back in. So I went to start filming so I can get him to come back out. Probably not. Well, in that conglomerate of jungle of web is my Trinidad olive. It has grown a lot. Uh, I shouldn't even try to pronounce his name, but Holothiel NC, uh, as the name implies, comes from Trinidad. Keeping this guy is the same as the rest of them, 75 to 82 threshold, been awesome. And I missed him once a week, complete enclosure mist, and then let it dry out. It's about time to clean this guy, so I might just do that. I don't know if I'm going to do it tonight. If I do, I'll throw a clip in here somewhere. Moving on. I know you guys really can't see it, but that is one beautiful spider. It's the Venezuelan sun tiger. It's one that April really wanted. It was a, a little bitty sling, and he's kind of in that hole slash funnel right there. I don't have the heart to tear it up quite yet, but if you Google Venezuelan sun tiger, you can see how pretty that spider is, but he's done great. That's another one I missed the entire enclosure once a week. I've done really well. Um, tropical species, 75 to 80 degrees, it'll thrive. Very cool. Let's get to another one. Here's my OBT. Um, orange baboon tarantula, African species. Guy can handle it from 75 to 90 degrees, he'll thrive. Uh, this is another one. I missed the whole enclosure weekly. If you go back, you'll see where I actually transferred him to this enclosure. Let me back off of it here. It's just a little slide top. He made his own nice little webbing. He's done really well. That guy right there we got is a itty bitty guy and he's come a long ways. You see him when it's feeding time. That's about it. But happy to have him. All right, guys, right here is a really cool critter I've had for a good while. This is my Telus Whip Scorpion. He is super fast, so I'll try to do this without him running in. He's molted once since we've had it. No, I'm sorry, I take that back twice now. And I've actually got one of the molts. It was a perfect molt. Harmless thing, I call it a cave cricket. Um, you know, same deal with just about everything else in here. I don't have to have any kind of supplemental heat. It's done great. 75 to 80 degrees. I missed him twice a week. They seem to like the moisture. I don't supply a water dish for it. I just, I missed it unless of course I go out of town and. Stay focused. They're so fast. I was going to see if I could kind of make him go back in his log. Oh. Oh. I'm losing focus. There's your tail swip scorpion. Oh. Last time. We're going to go this time. 
Such a crazy animal. Can you imagine what kind of sensory organ? I mean, just, God, it's nuts to think about what that thing is, you know, how he just sees the world with them antennae and nuts. Are oh, you gonna stay? I actually hold this thing. People ask me that. I can't believe you hold that thing. It doesn't bother me for some reason. Oh, I think I'm about to get to hold it like it or not. Alright, over to something else. Alright guys, it's one of my favorite spiders. That is my Goody Metallica. I've never sexed it, but starting to get a lot more blue in it now, so I'm it may be a male, but either way I'm happy to have it. I've had it since a little bitty sling. It's really done well. It's a hard spider to get. Well, I mean they're I guess they're getting more common, but they're just they're endangered where they're from and I was just so happy to come up with a captive. I mean the camera isn't doing it justice. I've been keeping this guy. I've slowly transferred him into bigger and bigger enclosures. You know where he's going to down there. But 75 to 80 degrees, been awesome. I missed him two times a week. I missed it, let it dry out. That tends to keep my humidity good. It's coming up again, or I can see him, but I'm scared to death because I don't have the lid on here. Such an awesome spider. Golly, guys, so fast. I mean, super, super fast. Uh oh. He's coming up. Get one more shot. I gotta get this lid on. Man, wanna look at the blues. What a pretty spider. That's my favorite. Alright, before he jumps out on me and I scream like a girl, let's go to another one. Alright guys, in here, keep the uh, Chaco Golden Knee. Let me see if I can do this. Um, come to Paraguay, keep them on the top shelf up there. Him and my Red Knee stays about 80 degrees or so. And there that beautiful thing is. Uh oh, I'm making a mess buddy, I'm sorry. I've actually held this spider. Um, if you guys have been watching me, me and that spider's got a history. We had a standoff one day. I probably could have moved my hand, but I was too big of a girl. It's been a great spider. I just had to keep them on the top shelf. Humidity about 50%. So I missed this guy very sparingly, and that's, that's pretty much about it. I offer a water bowl from time to time, but most of the time I give a quick spray up there that seems to be all he needs about a 50% humidity and 80 degree temperature great tarantula if you're thinking about getting into them grows fairly large and very long lived very pretty spider yeah over to another one In here is another one of my favorite tree spiders. It's my Indian ornamental. Um, I'm sure he's on the back here. Pocolotheria regalis. Let's see. There he is. He's got like staying behind that moss strip right there. Now this guy can really handle the temperatures where it comes from. It can get up to uh, like 120. But you don't have to keep it that high. Um, I've maintained this one around the same as the Metallica has done fine. That 80 degree threshold with, you know, uh, now as far as my mistings go, I do him the same as the Metallica, just a good heavy misting. Uh, dries out, give him another one. That one has really grown. Wish you could see him better. I know it's going to be a lost cause, but. Not sure what it is. 
male or female. It's getting a lot of good yellows in it. So either way though, like I said, off to another one. This beauty is my Tago Starburst Baboon, guys. Awesome spider. Guy's grown a lot. It is so fast. I tore its enclosure up to get y'all this shot, but it needed a good cleaning anyway. He had an awesome funnel. It's one of those, it's a pit hole, comes out only at night. You catch it at night though, it's a really agile spider. I've witnessed this guy jump clear over a foot. It's just so pretty, so pretty. 80 degrees, he's up on the top shelf. Um, I missed him when he's dry. Skip a few days, missed again. You know, 60-ish, 70% humidity. Man, it's such a pretty spider. It's the first time I've really got to see him, see him in a while too, so kind of taking my time. Sorry if I feel like I'm flying, guys. There's just so many, and I don't want to drag you guys into like a 30-something minute video, but... Right. One more look. Let's get over to something else. Right there, guys, in this little vial is the Avalacar Versicolor. It's going to be a beautiful spider when it gets bigger. It's an arboreal tree spider from the Caribbean. Um, same family as the Avalacar, Avalacar, the pink toe which I'll show you here in a second it just has a lot more stunning colors and it's so small and me trying to hold this camera in the light it doesn't do it justice but it's been a very cool little spider happy to have found it it's done really well I've left it in this vial for now since it's just so small golly I can't wait for it oh, there's a little bit better shot but you really you can't see the colors and such you really just see the size of it man I can't wait for it to get as big as the other one <laughs> this little bitty guy this is the um, Brazilian white knee tarantula uh, I'll try to pronounce it Ancithocuria geniculata uh, it's going to be a beautiful spider when it gets big. It comes from Brazil. Left it in this cup. It has molted two times now. It's been a really slow grower, but can't complain. He feeds really well. It's really starting to really just kind of starting to see those stripes start to appear on the legs like the adults get. And it's going to be fairly large. Um, 80 to 85 degrees, 75 to 80% humidity. I missed a lid on this little thing lightly and closed it up, and that's he's done good. If you go back, I can't remember which Repticon it is we picked this guy up from, but really excited for it to get larger. It's one of the couple of small slings we've got, but we're making it on through, guys. If you're still in here with me, I appreciate it, and I'm sorry if it's been boring or. I know it's a little different video, but it's really got to focus in to get good pictures of these things, you know, so I hope I ain't boring you too bad, but over to the next. All right, guys, in here, this would have to be the fastest growing tarantula that I've ever owned. This is our Brazilian Salmon Pink Bird Eater or Lazidora Parabana. I said that right uh, Brazilian species very fast I already had it come out on me earlier uh, I was getting some clips of the spiders for the intro and oh he's so fast it can be a mean one too but check out and try to get my hand so you can kind of get an idea <laughs> that's not working <laughs> Awesome spider though. Um, I've had this guy since he was a itty bitty bitty guy, and he is almost outgrown this 12 by 12 at this point. He's got it all webbed up. In need of a deep cleaning. Um, 
I miss this guy. He's got such a large screen top. When I see it dry, I miss. Sometimes that's every other day. Sometimes that's every third day. Just to keep the humidity up. Very cool. Very temperamental. Uh, he can really throw them hairs too, guys. When he was out, if you see how long those hairs are. I haven't had the pleasure of ingesting any of them and don't really plan to, but... Very neat. Moving on. All right, guys, in this extremely webbed up enclosure, my green bottle blue had this assuming girl. I've never checked the molts, but I've had it now for, I believe, going on, I think, six years one of the first tranches I got this one the red knee the Chaco little bitty slings I really should tear down this enclosure but I just don't have the heart she brings her poo out and leaves it in a little ball I just usually pick them up there's actually some right there um, really hardy species they like it dry um, I missed it once a week light misting seems to do fine you know, it stays, like I say, about 50% in the room here normally. So 50 to 65% is that does great. No supplemental heating, 75 to 80 degrees. Uh, very, very cool Venezuelan species of tarantula. A must-have. I just feel like tarantulas and, you know, a lot of these insects, they go right along with the reptiles, you know. I've noticed... A lot of us reptile guys or spider guys to some extent. I'm definitely not into them as much as I am like, you know, my true reptiles, but I do love my tarantulas, especially this one. Check it out. Camera does not do it justice, guys. Let's get to another one. In here, guys, is the Brazilian red and white tarantula. I'm going to try to get a better one. Uh, Lazadora cristata. Um, comes from Brazil, 75 to 80 degrees, 75 to 80% humidity. Thrives. I keep this one, like all the others, probably 60 to 70%. It's done great. Let me slide the lid and see if we can get a better shot. All right, there it is right there, guys slid the lid back i just cleaned its little enclosure here it's going to definitely need to go into something bigger when it i hadn't really got to see it that great because it's another burrowing species it's made had well had a, quite a few tunnels made and stayed out of sight but when i really looked at it i was like oh it's going to need something bigger it's really done good that's one that i missed um you know when it gets dry comes from brazil Rainforest species, um, no supplemental heating like the rest, 75 to 80 degrees is ideal. I can't wait. Another one I really can't wait for to get huge. It's going to be beautiful. Moving on. This was one of my very first tarantulas. I actually had this one and a male. Um, I had the male for about two years and it died. I've had this female, geez, I don't know how many years. It's a uh, Chilean rose hair. A lot of you probably already know, one of the most common tarantulas. Very good starter tarantula. Doesn't require a whole lot of much of anything. It stays in this tub, little Tupperware here. This has been fine. I mean, she's a little bit obese, I think. I think I feed her a little bit too much. Um, with her age because she's not very active but this one stays pretty dry um, I'll miss it one week and then next week I won't miss I actually add just a, like a bottle cap of water in there seems to do great um, you know I've always heard 75 to 80 percent on the humidity and that's what these care sheets say but I just don't see it I mean I, I haven't kept that one at that nowhere near that high of humidity just because being in this tub it'll mold and 
it, it's done great guys you can tell it's a healthy spider so Chilean rose hair we're coming to the home stretch guys not too many left you're still here I appreciate it and that little cup guys is the curly haired tarantula just kind of take my word for it. It's so small. It's one we got at the last show, so it's the newest tarantula we bought. Um, you know, Central America. It's you know, I don't I don't really know what all to say about it. I've had it long enough, other than I've been keeping it, you know, 70 to 80 degrees and about 60, 65 percent humidity. It seems to be doing well. It's molted once since we've gotten it, and it's feeding on little mealworms, but. I'm not gonna bore you with looking at a cup. We'll move on to another one, but that's the uh, the curly hair tarantula. Pretty neat, pretty neat tarantula. And here, guys, the pink toe tarantula. It's a very pretty, uh, nice arboreal species. Um, Avicolara, Avicolara. I'll try to get you a better shot. I don't seem to usually ever have. That's the, one of the easiest scientific names for me to remember for some reason very very pretty spider easy to keep um, another one from Brazil 75 85 degree range uh, 60 to 80 percent humidity I miss this guy uh, pretty much it, it has the same care as the Goody Metallica uh, the Asian ornamental it has thrived. That's another one we've had for a long time. I picked it up from a flea market uh, in Columbia, South Carolina, actually, several years ago. All right, trying to get you a little bit better view. These guys can leap pretty good, too. They make a jump. Um, this spider, just a little bit of background, can actually be housed communal, we've heard. Never tried it myself. Now, the... Uh, Versicolor cannot, from what I understand, be housed communal, but this one can. If you're wanting to try to get into tree spiders, this is a good one to start with, guys. Two more, guys. Two more. In here, guys, is one of my other favorites. It's one I've had for a really long time. It's my Mexican red knee, uh, Brachypelmia smithy, which I think they've actually changed that name. I don't know. I'm sure somebody will let me know. Gorgeous spider. Alyssa calls this one candy corn. I'm going to try to get my zoom straight, and then I'll take my light. See if I can get a little bit better light for you guys. Oh, it's kind of overexposing it. There we go. That is a very pretty spider. These guys, and I'm assuming this is a female because this is another one that's six plus years old at this point. It's taking it a long time to grow. Still has a long ways to go. But the female is 25 to 30 years, which is just stellar. I'm hoping it's a female. These guys are actually protected from being taken from the wild, which is awesome. There was just too many of them being taken for the pet trade. It's caused a you know increased spike in the price of these guys when you find them a couple years back you could get that spider there for you know 50 40 50 bucks not of course not that size uh which is now same size range which i'm talking like quarter inch half inch it, it's going to cost you 100 to 150 dollars for a, a good well started spiderling uh but just stunning stunning spider I might double up on her meals. Her abdomen's getting a little bit low. With this spider, that's really what I do, guys. I just kind of pay attention to abdomen size and feed from there. I usually do two, sometimes three crickets at a time. You know, I'll feed one, feed another. I fed two at one time before, and she actually grabbed both of them. Greedy little winch she is. But uh, just a, a awesome species. Can't say enough about it. 75 to 80 degrees, it thrives. 50 to 70 percent humidity range um, with this one and the Chaco I give them about the same amount of care they're up on the top shelf to where it stays a little warmer in the room and uh, 
I give them a light misting once a week, and then about two week span, I'll give a, a decent misting, not too heavy, but try to get a little bit more light. And I think we got my little king baboon, which is going to be a hold that you're not going to be able to see really. And I have uh, one I realized I don't have a care sheet on is my um, tiger centipede, my blue tiger. Still got it, my little one. Let's get them out of the way. Oh, look at that. Just candy corn. Alright, guys. Last tee. I know it's not very impressive because you can't see it. But you can see the holes in there. This is my little king baboon. He's growing pretty well. Come from Tanzania. Um, pretty hot where he comes from, but no supplemental heating. He's done great. You can see his three holes, kind of those holes all interconnect down there. This one I really cannot wait until he gets huge because it's just he's going to look stellar and we're going to really set him up nice. He's been a really slow grower. That king baboon's probably been the slowest growing tarantula that I have, honestly. Uh, I have several that have outpaced him leaps and bounds. I, I want to say I've had that spider there now for going on a year and a half or two years, and he's just now the size of the end of my pinky right there. But stellar holes, arrangements, and such through there. It's been a cool spider. Uh, 80 degrees, a little better, does fine. Uh, that's one that I missed pretty frequently sometimes twice a week something at least every week though he gets a misting and last but not least at least we should hopefully be able to see this one guys this is the blue uh, centipede tiger centipede come from Mesa desert centipede it's a little bitty guy but he is fast there he goes there he goes uh, I know y'all saw him but you get on around pick it up gotta be quick guys there he goes and gone and them things are fast ain't they there he goes he's like a little race car I've kept this guy pretty dry I actually missed it once a week though just lightly missed and then he'll get a heavy mist uh, I've been feeding mostly on baby roaches and uh, little mealworms he's just looking for cover but that is my blue centipede I don't have a little care sheet for him so but that don't mean you ain't loved just as much buddy it's been in this nice little container I had one guys if you remember me talking about it, I had it in a little different enclosure. I had it one of those Zilla slide tops, and uh, yeah, that joker got out. He's still yet to be found. That's the one I made a joke about that April couldn't believe that I didn't tell her for a while. And she walks out here barefoot, just like I'm barefoot right now. Let me put you back on the tripod real quick. And real quick, guys, if you're still with me, it's kind of a sneak peek. If you go back to the other video at the uh, Serpentarium when we was up in North Carolina last weekend, the guy he um, who actually owns the place, he breeds uh, pygmy rattlesnakes and he has a set of striped pygmies. You can see that pygmy's got a, a little bit of pattern. He's in shed right now, but he's got a little bit of pattern and then a solid stripe down his back. Pretty crazy. This snake was actually born a few days before we got there so far he hadn't popped that shed yet but he did eat a earthworm for me which is a plus I'm gonna try him on a frozen thawed he wouldn't touch a frozen thawed but I think it has to do with the shed as soon as he sheds and then like I can say if you made it this far in the video you're a trooper so I figured I'd show it to you it'll be an update in the next video though really tickled to have that guy Hello guys, that was some work. 
I'm sure if you enjoyed it and it wasn't too boring, I done got spoiled. I'm used to having my cameraman. So I was kind of, you know, having to do everything myself. I hope I got you guys some good shots. I have no idea, so I'll sit back and edit all this mess. It was fun. I didn't get bit. Nothing got away, so it was all a win-win. Um, before we go, though, guys, I know a lot of you have. Got a lot of y'all from Texas. Hope you guys are well up that way. Make sure you keep in your prayers. And, hey, keep us in your prayers because there's another hurricane coming up. Who knows where it's going to hit. I sure hope that it just kind of veers and, and goes back offshore. But, uh, guys, like I said, <clears throat> I hope it was halfway informative, educational. A lot of you wanted an invert update. That was everything. Um, some stuff was pet holes. But uh, sure hope it's some good clips. <clears throat> and that it wasn't too long and boring. But, hey, I appreciate you hanging in there. Once again, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking out with me. That's all I got for now. Stay safe, and we'll catch you next time. Appreciate you guys.